How's my makeup? You look gorgeous. Okay, gorgeous. then you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's an honor to speak with you today, David. And do you prefer being called David or Dave? It doesn't matter. Okay. It's all good. All right, we'll start with a brief rundown on the band's inception. I'll be telling everybody about how you guys got together from, from all the, your bio and such, but can you describe briefly how Svengali became Svengali? Well, I think it was back in, in 1987, um, uh, Andy and I, uh, we played in a band together. And, um, you know, you know, when you just start playing, you're playing with uh, some guys and uh, to put it to put it nicely, they weren't that very good. So Andy and I were always searching elsewhere for other players. And, and um, then one afternoon, it was like I remember I remember like yesterday, it was a, a winter storm and uh, Andy and I were at my place and uh, we got a call from this bass player guy in Hamilton who was like. 45 minutes away and it was Sean and uh he said yeah why don't you come to Hamilton right now I go dude it's like there's a winter storm outside he says come on up we can hang out here right we never even met the guy before mm -hmm. so we drove all the way to Hamilton and uh, Andy and I in the storm and we got to his house and we hit it off right away like as soon as we met him we hit it off and so we started chatting about music and and um then one thing led to another he says I know this great drummer and so um, I said, oh, yeah. So we started talking about that. He called him. So we drove over to his house. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we were, it was Steve at the time. And uh, again, it was, it was great. And then um, from there, uh, that same night, then D came into the picture. So we ended up uh, getting together at D's place. So by the end of it, it was one in the morning. We're about five, six beers in at his house and then uh andy and i uh slept there that that night and uh, we all slept together at these place and then in the morning uh I, we got up andy and i drove home we grabbed all our stuff we grabbed a, a gym bag of clothes and moved back to hamilton and uh we started rehearsing and that was it so it's One like everything night. lined up yeah even the name of the band we were why we're at d's house uh, talking uh and chatting um uh there's this movie playing in the background and the movie was called Sven Galley. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just kept, I kept on looking. We're all just, uh, we we're all talking, just kept looking at this weird movie. And, um, and at the end of it, uh, we we're, you know, getting ready to call it a night. And then uh, we said, uh, yeah, you know, we just got to find a name for this band. And Steve went, it's called Sven Galley. Whatever. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> That's amazing. Did you yeah, ever, it all happened in one night. Did anyone ever try to sue you from the movie? <laughs> Say That's uh, our name. No. No, we never, no, no I think because we changed it. I think we, uh, we hyphenated it. We did something. I don't know. There's Somebody a space, it. right? Like it's, it's yes. space. It's not one word. That's correct. No, yeah. So that's how we, I think that's how we got away with it. Your bio speaks of the band building your wild reputation, quotes, wild reputation. What fueled that? And were you guys bad boys? We weren't scared to have a party. <laughs> and, and. Oops, sorry, I'm getting a, okay. getting a, okay, sorry, it's on my, oh, here we are, you're back. Um, <laughs> we're, not, we're not scared to have a party, and uh, we weren't scared uh, uh, to get in a little bit of trouble, mm -hmm. uh, but in a, in a good-natured way. We're, everybody, we're all great guys. They're all harmless stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we're very young and, and, uh, and having a lot of fun and traveling around the country, a bunch of young guys playing rock and roll. What, what's gonna happen right you're gonna have a Back good time music. absolutely yeah. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. i talk to are like no we were we were just focused on the music i'm like come on you had yeah. fun too <laughs> yeah so, that's uh that, that's the, the common phrase we all try to get away with but everybody knows so why lie to you <laughs> <laughs> it's you been know? a while we can we can all tell what, what happened and and you enjoyed yeah. yourselves that's great now yeah. at what point in your success with the band, did you guys get your own road crew and tech? Did, you, did when did that kind of thing start happening? Well, my uh, the guys in the band, they um, I think it was like a, almost the second year in. Uh, every none of them wanted to carry their stuff around, so so we brought a couple of guys on the road with us, and then from there, um, you know, it, it grew as a family, and then um, uh, we brought. Uh, uh, Colin in and Derek in and then all of a sudden we were all just traveling together 
prior to uh, prior to uh, getting a record deal. Mm -hmm. And then when we went, went to Los Angeles uh, for that few months before we got signed, um, it was just us out there. And then um, when we got back to uh, Toronto, we came back to a record deal and then we put the family back together again and, and off we went. So there you good. go. Now, as a vocalist back in the early days, did you help the band haul gear too? Because the vocalists get... get I never touched anything. <laughs> Sometimes there's like a deal where um, the vocalist's job is to do all the socializing. So you're supposed to be out there talking to the fans. Not yeah, I never got like either. <laughs> I um I I um I I guess I got away with murder to some extent. Now I look back on it. Uh I remember we we were traveling it was yeah, it was on on the first record the tour across Canada and we always seemed to tour in the winter. We can't go in the summer. We always had to go in the winter. And I remember getting sick in Thunder Bay. I think we started in Montreal and started coming across and I got sick in Thunder Bay. And then the record companies decided just to fly me gig to gig. Like, mm. so town to town and whatever. Ooh, and fancy. as soon as I got a taste of that, as soon as I got a taste of that, I got sick on the next tour too in the winter. <laughs> so, <laughs> purposely. <laughs> yeah, I'd arrive, I'd arrive um, I'd get to the hotels way before the guys, like sometimes those drives across Canada to Vancouver, I'd get there a couple of days before them and I'd be all rested and I'd watch them show up in the tour bus and they'd be all beat and, you know, so I'd were be ready like, to go. Were they like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a couple of times. They knew I was juicing it. <laughs> I guess you would if you could, right? Now yeah, tell, me, tell me about being on Headbangers Ball as we don't have that in Canada, do we? No, no. Headbangers Ball. Um, what was that show about? Did, did, did you see that? Did you see it? I didn't see it. I just you read it in your. I read it in your I, bio. Can I find it on YouTube? I I don't know. I gotta send that to you. It was. Please do. It was crazy. It was. Um, so, I'll tell you. We we were in England and we we're playing uh, the Headbangers Ball. Um, it was. It we're playing in front of fifty thousand Hell's Angels. It was the Hell's Angels reunion, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was, we, we, uh, we got on the bus and we're heading out to the venue and uh, we're coming to, to the venue and then the outside of the venue, it's the British army. And on the inside of the venue, it's all hell's angels. Wow. And so we, we pulled up to go in. I'm going, I don't know if I want to be here. And we pull up and uh, as soon as we pulled up and the British army got on our bus, you know, just checking us out, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. We're here to play. And, um, and then when we got through there, that checkpoint, then the Hell's Angels got on our bus. But the difference between the Hell's Angels and the, and the army was the Hell's Angels didn't get off our bus. It became their party bus. <laughs> so we, we, uh, we, we went backstage um, there. And um, yeah, and, and they were some of the biggest guys I've ever seen. Like the, it was the, the German Hell's Angels that were running security. Mm -hmm. And the guys that got on our bus, their whole faces and everything were all tattooed. And they were like big guys. And I'm like, I'm this little scrawny guy with hair down to my ass, wearing jean shorts and no shirt on. <laughs> and I'm like sucking my thumb, hiding in a corner somewhere. So it was, uh, it was quite the experience. It was, uh, it was different. But anyway, so we, they have a big uh, festival. It was their, like their reunion. And the Headbangers Ball came out and they just filmed us all around the, the venue. They had like a uh, yeah, I can't believe you haven't seen this. The riding of the bull, that bull riding. There's so much going on there. It was crazy. And uh, so we were, they were following us around with cameras. And then, um, and then uh, we went on stage uh, um, that night. And yeah, it was, uh, they, they have a good time. Let's say that. Well, they were probably like, yeah, Canada, get over here. Let's have a good yeah. time. Oh, but, yeah, I feel it was good. but that's the thing too. I think the reason why I didn't know about Headbangers Ball until I read it in your bio is because I am Canadian and I hadn't even heard of it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So Headbang well, Headbangers Ball is European. It's England. It's from Europe, mm -hmm. right? From England. So, um, but I've heard of, there was MTV, the US Headbangers Ball. I don't know if you ah. ever saw that. Yeah. So that was that was cool but um that was a lot of fun you know what I'll, i'm gonna track that down i know andy has that and i'll send it to you and you'll you'll laugh your head off like it was, crazy. it was crazy i'm looking forward to it if i find it yeah. on youtube I'll, I'll make sure i share the link with all of our listeners too if they can check it out yeah yeah
Sorry, your audio and video is just cutting out for a second. I think you're almost back. Oh, am I okay? Am I back? Just about. Yeah, you're back now. I, I, oh, okay, I see you. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah, so we, uh, that whole tour was good. We played like 31 shows in 33 days. And I don't even know where I was. Like, they were putting the name of the city on my monitor because I was lost. <laughs> I had no idea. Just get up and river. So it was fun. No, so where are you? At? Where are I'm you in, right now? I'm in Edmonton. Edmonton. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So we played Edmonton. Uh, where did we play in Edmonton? Somewhere downtown, I think. Edmonton. Uh, when was the last time you played Edmonton? Ninety-three. Oh my 93. goodness. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I remember being. We played Calgary the night before. No, we played. We played Calgary. No, we played Edmonton the night before. Then the next night was Calgary. And I remember getting up on stage in Calgary and just forgetting where I was again and saying, how are we all doing in Edmonton? And that's not a good thing to do. Oh, yeah. In Calgary. They, <laughs> <laughs> you know that. You know that rivalry. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, so it was fun. <laughs> so tell me about recording and uh, everything basically touring recording now that once you had a big hit once you had a hit album under your belt you had the big single and yeah. things start things start moving does the record company loosen the reins and give you more control do you get a bigger bigger budget bigger guests and producers what happens after that well after when things start got uh rolling then obviously i they started um yeah, things did start opening up and opportunities started opening up. Um, if you, you got to get that buzz going or it doesn't happen, right? And um, yeah, and then, yeah, so we, because of that, and then the whole change from rock and grunge, that whole time, that weird time that everybody went through. Yeah. Um, then then um, they asked us where we wanted to record. And so we said, we'd like to go to like, you know, we want to go see, check out the scene out there, see what's going on, like in Seattle and stuff. So we ended up um, recording at London Bridge Studios where Pearl Jam did 10, Alice in Chain, wow. Blind Melon. And so Christopher from Blind Melon played on our record with us. The singer Candlebox played on the record with us. Um, we hung out with the guys from Queensryche, that the whole scene. Mm. So we arrived there and uh, we, were, we were going to this, um, it was like, pre, uh, like a, a pre-pro or, or rehearsals for the record. And we were in this uh, uh, rehearsal studio and I remember walking up to the studio and I'm going, look at these bikes. Look at that. There's a beautiful, accurate NSX back in the day. And I'm just looking uh, at the quality of the, the cars in the parking lot. And when I walked in and there's Alice in Chains and Soundgarden in there rehearsing and Blind Melon Ooh. at this point. So um, that was good. It was, uh, it was a great time. It was a cool time. Do you but, feel um, Go ahead. Um, yeah. And so during that process, um, there is this uh, uh, studio, I think it was called, the, I, I'm not, I don't even remember what it was called, but it was this, it's a cave and it's like in the rocks by the ocean. And it's a really cool place, but it was kind of eerie when I was in there. And they took me there to do a vocal for, um, I forget what song it was. I don't remember anymore, but they took me there to do a vocal and I just felt a weird vibe. And um, so I went into the, the, the sound booth and then, I saw some, uh, I saw like the headphones and stuff like that. So I started putting things on and it just looked like it was like not cleaned up. Like it was just left as it was. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I came out, I, from what I understood, uh, Kurt Cobain was the last guy in there. Wow. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Like it was really, it was weird. Yeah. Like so, it probably has a certain, certain vibe to it when you know that information. <laughs> yeah. I went to after the fact. It was it was weird and uh, and I just thought uh, and and I was saying are you sure, are you sure and the guy said yeah sure I'm telling you and I just uh, it was but there was a weird vibe like even in the studio with the people everybody but it was cool it was a good experience a lot of a lot of a lot of different experiences when you when you get to play music and you get to meet oh. Oh. Started cutting out again. Uh, at the rate of people that we met. My back. Yeah, back now. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, so we just get to meet a lot of people and, and get to have a good time, you know? It was a lot of fun. Was there, it seems like you really took the whole time and you were able to embrace it as it was happening and, and enjoy it. Because I know sometimes you hear that it's just work, 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 and then folks don't get to really enjoy the success they've had. How did, how did you take it at that time? How was I at that time? Yeah, um, how were you able to enjoy it all while it was happening? Or were you just too busy focused on, be, on doing the work? Uh... I don't even think we thought it was work. We were yeah. just too busy having a good time. That's what I love to hear. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't. We were a different bunch of guys. We didn't uh, consider anything as work. We just went out and did what we did, mm. and it's it was uh, it's it was legitimate. There was nothing fake about it, and uh, we we really truly, and I think we're the, still the same guys today. We don't give a fuck what people have to say about us. I Personally, love it. individually, or whatever. We just, and, and I, I would expect that from everybody. Um, you know, just be yourself. And, and if people like it, great. And if they don't, then it's not, you know, it's not for them. But, but we were always that way. We couldn't care less, you know. Mm. Not it's in a bad answer. way. Yeah, not in a bad way. Because when you're in the, when you're in the spotlight or you're, when, you're, when you're in a band or even for yourself, you're behind a camera, you, you get judged. Whether you want to get judged, you get judged. Right. So people will have that. Uh, and, and if you can, if you can block that and just stay, stay true and focus to what your goal is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get there, you know, it's good advice for everyone to hear. Absolutely. And I mean, yeah. did you, did you ever feel pressure from the record label or were things odd because of the fact that you're a hard rock metal band and it's all of a sudden grunge is here. Did that, did that derail anything for you? The grunge movement? I think uh, I think it derailed everything for everybody, including yeah. the record companies. Because that was the time when people started to make records in their basement. Mm -hmm. Right? And they didn't have to have these big studios and stuff. So I think that was the beginning of the end for a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it was uh, it was a really, really weird time. Um, but what you can, all you can do is just roll with it. You can't, you know, you can jump up and down and stomp your feet and stuff like that. But again, we always believe that um, we'll do it for as long as people want to listen and we'll do it for as long as we feel good about doing it. And when time comes to end it, then we end it. Have you released you know? any or re-released so, any music on vinyl? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's kind of, it's, it froze again. Hello? Yeah, hi. Hi. Okay, hi. you're back. <laughs> Sorry, it's probably like it's a... Weird, eh? Might be, might be the Wi-Fi or something. Who knows? But I'm getting the majority of everything, which is nice. <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> almost. Almost. Oh. Yeah, not quite. How's that? Okay, I think you're back now. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. That's well, okay. It's okay. It's uh, a probably it's probably where the Wi-Fi. It might be the Wi-Fi where if this how the signal strength is or something like that. Oh, maybe I should go inside. I don't want you to ruin the time you have outdoors while it's still nice. <laughs> but I live outdoors. <laughs> I'm always outdoors. Um, this is my house, my my backyard. It's beautiful, by the way. Gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I can tell um, you've been doing some great work to it for sure. Yeah. And here's my uh, this is my my beer tap. Oh wow, that is <laughs> <Yeah>. sweet. <laughs> how's, um, how's the weather there year round? Do you get much of a winter? Oh yeah, yeah. We get we do we get a, a big winter here. We're, we're expecting a big winter this year. Mm. So they're saying. So we'll see what happens, but. I forget what was, what was I talking. What was I? Uh, what were we talking about? We were talking. We were talking first. Of, we were kind of wrapping it up about the about the record company and uh, uh, the grunge era, but then vinyl. about about vinyl. I was asking about vinyl. Yeah. So I have I have some vinyl from. Um, uh, we got we had, we did vinyl in Europe. Hmm. So we have we did uh, you know Ice T the song Body Count. Yep. Yeah, we played. We covered that. It's on vinyl, and Sweet. then we have. Uh, 
I think Hurt is on vinyl too from back in the day. And then Under the Influence, I think. There's some vinyls in Europe. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What album track do you wish would have been a single? From back then? Yeah. Um, from any of your releases? Well, there's, I, I, from, from a, I guess from a commercial standpoint, um, there's a song on the second record called Shallow. Mm -hmm. And I like that song. It's it's rock. And I, and then there's a there was a song on the second record on Wire um, that I think it was kind of a breakthrough moment for us in writing, and it's called "Tired of Listening." Yeah. And um, tired. And that's where uh, Christopher from Blind Melon played mandolin on it. Mm. And if you listen to the last song on In Wire, it's live off the floor. It's me, D, Andy, and Christopher from Blind Melon playing mandolin, and we wrote a song uh, on the spot. He came in the studio, we had candles everywhere. It was like, it, it was incense. It was just a, it was like our last night there. And uh, we walked in the studio. We thought we were gonna have a party, which yeah. we did anyway, but uh, it was our last night there getting ready for it. We came as ready for a party, right? They were gonna invite a bunch of friends from Seattle, all, all, like a bunch of bands, people come in to say goodbye because we were there for three months. Mm -hmm. And then we walked in the studio, we looked into the control uh, or into the, um, uh, room uh, outside the control room and there was all uh, candles and and stuff like that and, and the, our producer Kelly said you guys remember that riff you guys were just jamming around she says go in there and record it record it record a song so uh, me and D got together real quick and pounded out some lyrics and melodies and then uh, Christopher just jumped in and and played it and we did it in two takes and it was the second take we kept Beautiful. So, yeah, so if you listen to that song, it's called Who Said. We're going to share a clip of it on the show, if that's cool. We're going to share some clips from, from the albums. So Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah absolutely. What was yeah. one of your most memorable performances that, that you can recall? Well, my left nut is still ringing from Whistler when I got hit in the balls with a snowball. <laughs> that hurt. Was that, the snow, <laughs> was that much music snow job? Yeah. Yeah. 93 oh my god so i <laughs> i remember i remember waking up the next morning right and uh oh, that was a night let me tell you and i remember waking up the next morning and we read in the toronto star that the fans did not like Svengali that night we were pelted with snowballs and stuff right and we were laughing it was around breakfast and our and our people in toronto were calling us and we're all laughing together going how fucking stupid are these people because during each commercial break during snow job d our, our guitar tech was running and grabbing snowballs and would bring pails of snowballs up on stage and then during this during each break we'd throw snowballs into the crowd right just having fun whatever but then as the night started ramping up and ramping up and we were getting heavier and heavier and then we broke into under chaos the chaos like the lights were so bright i, I didn't even see the snowballs coming at me until the last second right oh. so so everybody thought everybody thought that um well toronto star said that but the cool thing about that night was after we finished playing we um after we finished playing we, uh, we went backstage and they took us to our hotel and, I, and we got cleaned up showered up and they were picking us up in the lobby in a van to take us to this bar because it's going to be an after show party mm. at the bar so we uh we got it. We got to the bar, and as soon as we walked into the bar, the DJ announced Van Gallies in the house, blah 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 blah, and all of a sudden, fucking snowballs start flying everywhere in the bar. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> that, I think it was a I, lot of fun. It sounds like everyone had a good time. Nothing wrong with a good snowball fight. <laughs> I, I I think that if if you talk to anybody who was around Van Galley, who it was always a good time. We mm. never, ever, ever had a bad time. Like <laughs> even on our drives, like it was always a good time. You, know? you have an excellent energy that's like so much fun. So I mean, yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, we had a, we had lots of lots of good times. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of hard times in the beginning and stuff like that getting started, but yeah. because we're kind of all driven guys to begin with, um, uh, we just you know just weathered the storm and kept going. Somebody's got to like us. We said. <laughs> did you ever get to do metal edge magazine uh, I, I, rec I recollect that um 
I remember I remember something. I know Andy Andy is the keeper of all Spangali stuff and he has everything. So He's, I can ask him to see what he has. Yeah, cuz like I I I am I'm like a I am I have nothing. I've been great. Like all my friends, everybody comes over and people are leaving with stuff all the time. All the time. I You're being generous. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, just I'm half in the bag. I'll take it. I don't care. Uh so. How does a band that has been together as long as you guys not get tired of each other on the road? Do you just get on a plane, like you said earlier, and <laughs> you uh, meet the band at the venue? <laughs> I think it's because we were really good friends. Mm -hmm. And and we went through a lot of shit, like, in the beginning. And I think we were just really good friends. And, I mean, there's the moments when you want to be alone or you just need some space or whatever, but it's not for, uh, not for them. It's just, you know, personal stuff or whatever. And, but uh, we never really had any problems with, with mm -hmm. each other. We always had a great time. And how have, you, how have you taken care of your voice over the years? Um, well, I'm not a smoker. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was extremely athletic when I was younger. Like I still work out now. Um, uh, well, I had a, I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I stopped, I stopped for about a year mm -hmm. and I gained a lot of weight. And, um, because I was not because for any, for, for the only reason that I was enjoying food and, and whatever, and, you know, just I let it go for a while. And then, uh, for the video that's coming out soon, I don't know if you new, just shot a new video for hurt. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just, I, I lost 37 pounds for that video Amazing. and I started working. Yeah, I started working out uh, about two and a half, three months before the video. And it's not to be vain. It's just the, the perception of Svengali in people's minds is one thing. And I didn't want them to, to um, I always made, I'm going off track here. That's fine. I always, we've always promised ourselves at the beginning of Svengali is when we used to go see bands um, when they got older and they, uh, and they tried to be who they were, but they didn't look like that and they were they gained you know what i mean they just got you just see age mm -hmm. we always uh, said to each other that we always want to leave the memory of Svengali as as what that was back then because you know um and we would just call it a day yeah. but then we'll, then when we got to this point it was like uh andy called me from china and he said dave you know what let's uh let's just do it again and i go well, Andy, we had a pact, man. I mean, we're, we're Motley Crue, not breaking up, and we're back, right? And he <laughs> said, I know, but you know what? Let's just, let's just do it for the music and not do anything. Okay, so let's just, so, we, so he wanted to come over. We're going to record a bunch of stuff and not get it out, not send it out, not do anything, just, just for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up, you know, it's just like, like the way we are. Starts off as one thing, and then we start pushing it to the limit. And uh, so we wrote this song called Kill the Lies. And um, we got, okay, well, shit, you know, it's not a bad song. Maybe we should call David, our first producer, David Bendis, who does, who's, he's done, uh, oh God, he's done everybody, like a lot of big bands. Um, uh, Bring, Bring Me the Horizon was his last band he did. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And uh, so we called him and he said, why don't you guys just come down to New York uh, to my place and we'll go to the studio that we have here and let's bang it out. So the way Svengali disbanded, uh, it was hard because we lost D and mm -hmm. we felt like in all of our guts, we had a lot to offer still like back then, like if we kept going, I think that, um, I think that we'd have had a lot to offer Canadian music and, and, and to people, but fate is fate and we just again roll with it and i'm 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 a believer that my destiny has been written already and i'm just following the path trying to make the right choices mm -hmm. and um that session and three the cd ep3 it was therapy in the end mm -hmm. it was therapy for all of us it was uh getting to know each other again and um uh getting out a lot of stuff uh, the way the way it came about and the ending of it and and when we were done it was just it was like a a feeling of of uh, like like this weight off off our shoulders that we could still do it and even though we're fifty it's heavy like we're not it's not it doesn't sound light it's heavy and and that's important that was that was um, 
it made us feel good because I didn't want to release something soft and old. You know, yeah. we wanted to try to be you're fresh. Gonna, yeah, you're not gonna get all fluffy just because you've gotten older. You still, yeah, you still love the same music. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So I, I, uh, so there was just sense of accomplishment and relief. And um, when we finished that, and it was that song. So when we finished that song, I came home and. I went, yeah, that was, that was good. I, I was ready to put it to bed. Mm -hmm. Two days later, Dan calls. Uh, are we going to do another one? Oh, no. <laughs> so then, then we did uh, um, uh, Break Me, and we did that on the, at the, on the Indian Reservation in, uh, um, uh, up here in, in our area. I forget the name of the um, – oh, Juca Jocasta Studios. Okay. And um, – so we did that on the reserve here, and then and then we did uh, then we did obviously we did two more songs, and I thought it was going to be the end, and all of a sudden, okay, now here's an EP. Oh, there's a record company interested, you know. So it's like the mafia; you can't get out once you're in. Snowballed. You, yeah. <laughs> it's just growing again. Yeah. So it started snowballing, as you said, and then um, and we enjoy playing it, and live it sounds fucking great. Uh, like it sounds huge. Uh, those songs live and I, I'm I'm you know a lot of people love the first record and I know a lot of people weren't too crazy about the second record um, they thought we were trying to jump on uh, jump on the grunge or whatever but but the second record for us was us finding ourselves and it was a necessary step mm -hmm. to three you know so that's um, that's uh, what people, I guess, who are music listeners don't understand that we have to evolve too as people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you're not the same woman you were when you were younger. Oh, and no. we all evolve in different ways, you know? And so yeah. we, we took that journey. And again, we did, we did it in Wired because we didn't give a fuck what anybody was going to say about us. That's what, that's what it was. And then healthy. Uh, it's healthy. We went to, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, now we're here and, um, I was actually asked this morning if we're going to do another one, and uh, and we are. So oh, this that's wonderful June, news. Yeah, this June twentieth, uh, we were well, we were supposed to tour Canada this summer, and unfortunately, with COVID, um, it, whatever it, it it did, it it happened, and it is what it is. But we've already started looking at dates for next year, and and mm -hmm. um, we're going to do. Uh, uh, we're playing a big festival in June twentieth in Burlington. Uh, we're playing a festival there with our friends Honeymoon Suite. Uh, they're nice. good friends of ours from back in the day, Johnny. And, um, um, uh, and I just then, talked uh, to them recently. They're going to be on the show pretty soon here. So, oh, yeah. oh really? Well, tell Johnny if you talk to Johnny, say Dave from Spangali says hi. He says <laughs> tell him he still owes me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> and then yeah, so we're going to start that uh, in June, and then and then we're going to head. Uh, we're coming your way. Oh, good. I'll be there. So I'll, I'll, I'll get out of, oh, hopefully everything will be, we'll get the vaccine yeah, or whatever, sure. and it will be good to go, but I want to be there. I'll definitely come check it out. Oh, frozen. Yeah, it'd be fun. Oh, shit. Okay, you're back. Here, I'm going to, I'm back. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over here. Hold on a second. Let's see okay. what happens. We went for a good stretch there, though, where it was great. Solid. Yeah, it was good. It's just you know what? Let me get over to uh, my garage. Uh, I'm trying to see if my Wi-Fi signal picks up in here, but oh, it's okay. I should get it better inside. I actually work for tech support, so I, I deal with this Wi-Fi thing all the time. <laughs> where's your router oh, located? Really? Yeah, where's your uh, router located? Uh, in the basement. Yeah. That's why, probably. Yeah, that's why. That's but okay. anyway, I'm, I'm in a better spot. I'm Sounds sure. good. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. That's so. Okay. Yeah, I still have a few questions. I hope your time is still good because I don't want to. I don't want to keep you too long no, if you're busy. I'm totally free. I ended my day uh, just before our call, and and I'm ready to have a beer. Oh, nice, <laughs> very nice. Um, so, 
what is the difference now have you guys had you've had the opportunity to play in the uk have you ever done the european festivals that's uh that's that's one thing that we uh haven't got to yet was the your Euro the european festivals after we did um that first tour in england and we did uh germany uh pardon oh uh germany and all that stuff we came home and then um i guess the next step was to go back and do festivals and stuff like that mm -hmm. but um uh, we didn't make it because of whatever reasons we started the second record and then after the second record we were supposed to go on the road candle box in the states mm -hmm. and then the accident happened with d uh and um it put a hold on everything so we didn't get there but i know there's a lot of talk of us going over there to do that on this on on three which we'd like to entertain yeah i feel like it would be a totally different animal to do a european rock festival i've just heard it's the most amazing experience for many canadians that have gone over there and came back and told me about it have you seen um i'm sure you've seen disturbed in germany um playing uh, uh down with the sickness of sickness have you, have you seen that video on youtube they play they play a place in germany it's like an airport hangar and I, i'm pretty sure it's hangar 10. uh yeah. it, it's so many people it's crazy we played there we did play that place in germany um but we played inside the hangar we didn't do the airfield obviously because that's festival field mm -hmm. um but if you watch that that's that's what it is that's what it looks like it's it's nuts absolutely wild and yeah. Europeans tend to appreciate rock music more now than a lot of other countries, maybe, you know, especially North America. I think that rock is still quite well, doing quite well in Europe. Oh, 100%. Um, even when we were there, uh, we were playing in Germany. And you remember the band uh, Saga back in the I day? remember the, the name. Band? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were a rock band from the 70s, our 70s, I think. And they were still playing big venues there. Like they really appreciate the rock, but they, they like the rock all over Europe. Um, mm -hmm. We had a, we had a, when we played London, England, we had a, a bus of uh, people come from Rome, Italy to come see our show. Like they come from all over. It's a, it's a venture to go see a show. Mm. You know, it's, it's, so it's, um, yeah, they, they really do enjoy it. Yeah, and they like live and breathe the music, you know? It's not just like where you're trying to get 20 people to come to a club and edmonton to see a good rock show <laughs> you yeah, know it's know. like over there they're like yes we embrace live music and we want to learn new artists and i just i absolutely love that yeah yeah it's uh if you're a music lover um it's definitely there's uh they're very open and that is critical you know like we've i've done a lot of interviews and in, and in, in the and dan um has, we've done a lot of interviews in europe uh for what uh three and they um they they're not scared to tell you what they think, mm -hmm. uh, but it's constructive. And, um, but they, the, everybody's telling us over there, they love, they like hurt the song hurt. Mm -hmm. It's just straight ahead, straight ahead, rock and roll, you know? Uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons why we did the video for that song uh, for those guys. Good, good. We're going to share all that on our social media too. We'll make sure people get to get to hear the new stuff, the old stuff. We'll be putting clips in into the show of different songs. So, I'm excited cool. to share those. What are some of the favorite things for you about being Canadian and your culture? Um, well, no, I guess the number one thing is uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I, I think it would really suck if everybody's the same. Yeah. You know, and um, so for me, sorry, I, I want to go back outside because it's got sunny. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in the front here. Um, hey. I think it's the uh, the diversity. I love um, different cultures. I mean, I was born in London, England, uh -huh. um, and then we moved here when I was young. And um, yeah, I mean, it would suck if everybody was the same. But I, I enjoy the uh, uh, I, you know this whole thing with like all the racism and everything that's going on right now, and and it mm. just makes me sick. I just like hello, everybody, wake up, man. I mean, can you imagine? life without um without different uh, cultures with different music different different foods it'd be so boring right? so boring yeah so i you know i found out a lot. i've been looking into my my um my history and, and my grandfather uh my grandfather is um from winnipeg and apparently he apparently we have some native indian in our in our blood uh 
nice. from, from his mother, and uh, which, which is really cool, which I really think is awesome. And I'm going to go, like, I've got, I, got, I just got my arms cleaved, and now I'm going to get some Indian stuff on my other arm to represent that part of my life. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's all cool. So I, I enjoy all that stuff. Like, it's great. Did you do that ancestry test? The ancestry. I was, I was kind of scared. I'm scared to do that. They say, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I did it. I, did you? Oh yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. I, I mean, well, part of the reason I did it is because I actually didn't know what half of my culture was. So, or, or my, my ancestry. So it's really cool to find out what you, you know, what you didn't know, and, um. So but I don't you, think it determines you as, as a person who you are. You're still the same person before you found out. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I'm actually half Ukrainian, and I had no idea I had any Ukrainian. Wow. So it explains my Thank love for cabbage rolls, I guess. I guess. Oh. I love cabbage rolls. And, they're, <laughs> and, they're, uh, and you're Canadian and, and Ukrainian? Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. a, a, just a European mix, really. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 cool. it's actually cool to find out, but... Um, I know some people do it as a family where they actually, everybody in the family wants, wants to take part in ancestry, but it's kind of weird. Cause it's like, you're all going to get the same result most likely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you never know. <laughs> never know. You, never know. you might get a surprise. Yeah. When you're wondering why that kid doesn't look like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, and another thing is cool. I think I, I think a lot of times people appreciate everyone's culture more when they've had the opportunity in life to travel. Oh, 100%. I think, 100%. I think, I think those people who haven't had a chance to see the world are the ones that can be bigoted and closed minded. There is nothing better at sunset to sit in a piazza in Rome mm. and watch artists paint and watch people walk by and smell the food. And you, you, you go, and, and the big thing for me is the architecture. I, I was walking up to churches and I was touching the church walls, the stone, like who put this here? What was his life like? You know, it was, it is when you go there, it really truly, you know, at certain times of day, you can do the, we did the nighttime uh, walk of the ruins of Rome. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, I got to say, it is probably the most romantic place you can be at, at night. It's just so, so cool. It's awesome. And then, then to go and eat there, and, and we had a fantastic time there. And we've been everywhere, like man. Um, uh, but that, but uh, Rome, and Italy, Capri, Italy, um, mm. you know, uh, uh, Verona. Uh, it's all beautiful places. It's nice. Fantastic that you've got to experience that. No. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Who have you met in the music business that you are most excited to meet, or taught you the most? Um, well, accidentally, I was having drinks with Robert Plant in Toronto at a, at a, at a, uh, it was a magazine release or something. Mm -hmm. And we're all standing around. I turn around, oh, I'm now I'm standing beside Robert Plant. And we started talking and he listened to his stories. And he was at the time, I believe he was dating with Alana Miles at the time. Oh, wow. Uh, she was there with him. Um, but you know, I've met so many bands, like we've met a ton of people, you know, the guys from Def Leppard are great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're great. We like their kids are great. We're, we're, I'm a big soccer guy. Like I play, my son plays soccer all over. I'm, I was a big soccer guy. That's um, great. I'm, I'm a Liverpool fan, as you can see right there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and they're playing right now. And, uh, and so I was playing soccer with those kids uh, and they're great. They're pretty down to earth guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I mean, who else? John Candy. He was a blast. <sighs> Legend. You no, know, he was. A, yeah, he was a blast. Um, fuck, uh, Julia Roberts, Keith Sutherland, shooting pool and Hollywood billiards on, on the Hollywood Boulevard. Um, just, just tons of people. Oh, you know, oh, so Rock and Ronnie Hawkins. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know. Who he is. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we were fortunate one night. Svengali, him and his wife, and their girlfriend. Uh, we were fortunate to uh, wow you know, around a dinner table, and uh, we had dinner with them. And uh, then he started telling us his stories. 
And I tell you, we sat there all night. You know, their girlfriend was rolling joints, and and he was telling us about uh, about rock and roll and and what they went through and and stuff that that they went through. It was just incredible. So it was great, great times. Oh, I can only fun. imagine the stories. <laughs> yeah, it was it was wow. uh, it was yeah, yeah. I, yeah, all the guys are good. I mean, the guys from Queensrÿche. I I, I love uh, Jeff Tate. Uh, he's he. I gotta say, he's the one guy that when I met him, I said, Jeff, I'm not a starstruck guy. I don't, but I'm. I have so much respect for you, and uh, that's what I said to him. And then I felt. Then I walked away feeling like a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, it's so embarrassing sometimes when you meet people who are like your your idols or they've done they inspire you and you're just like i don't know what to say i'm gonna say something stupid <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah we're not uh, starstruck guys but I, I tell you meeting jeff tate was um was a cool experience for me because i listened to him so much when i was younger mm. you know? but uh remember that queen of the right ep that came out it was awesome yeah no, he's a fantastic vocalist incredible yeah yeah now, did you get involved with using the internet for Svengali and promotion in its early stages in the 90s? Or was that something that was still not on the radar yet? Uh, no, it wasn't really much on the radar too much at that time. Um, mm -hmm. No, we, we just missed that. You know what I mean? Like, we, we just missed that. And I'm still not a huge uh, social media guy. Like, I, I, I'm so, so busy. And I know people live their lives around around it and a lot of people made a lot of money doing it and around it but um and not that i don't like it it's just oh frozen the request oh frozen okay yeah. hold on <laughs> and now you're back <laughs> i was getting yeah. this we know okay. where your where your, your wi-fi yeah, spots are <laughs> that's it that's what she said <laughs> Okay. Okay. How's that? Come back. Very good. Very good. Sorry, you were talking about uh, just missing the internet, uh, and then and then it cut off. Yeah. Then I, I, as I said, I'm not. I was never uh, big, and I, um, I remember I got on Facebook once, and all of a sudden you get all these requests and this and that. Well, holy, this is overwhelming because I felt guilty not answering. So you can consume your life sitting there. I think. So I, think I got off. I think it's smart of you to just go out and live your life and not worry about what's happening online because we're all buried in our phones and it's not exactly the best way to live, right? So good on you for not uh, not doing that. Can you hear yeah. me okay? Your picture disappeared. Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I lost you for I was going to say, yeah, so we... Uh... Yeah, I, I, uh, I, think, I, think, uh, I think it's necessary today. I mean... Um... I, I, yeah, today, I think you have to be involved in it to some extent for business, for this, for whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good for a little bit of downtime for me. But other than that, I would rather be um, building something or working, mm -hmm. doing something. You know, I, I like I like to work. I like physical stuff. Yeah. Um, I like to do stuff. So for me, it's that. You still get to be creative, too, if you're doing like whatever it is you're doing with physical work. Like, obviously, you've, done, you've made yourself a beautiful landscaping business and it's it's probably yeah. like more rewarding than sitting around being buried in your phone <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is it is uh but i tell you I, I mean the kids today they can they can whip around on social media and phones and computers and stuff like that where i think we, I, we get uh, bogged down quite a bit as uh for me anyway <laughs> mm -hmm. now i'm going to be wrapping this up very shortly i just wanted to ask you one thing before we left well, is there a, something specific that would make you nostalgic for the 90s, like things like a clothing items, a certain toy, uh, a food or drink? What, what, can, what, bring, what would take you right back? To the 90s? Yeah. To the 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's, yeah, it's one you kind of have to think about. <laughs> What there's, there was um, in a night. If I had to, yeah, geez, I don't know. I mean, if I think that uh, if when I think about the '90s, I think about when we recorded the second record, 
-hmm. And I think about, um, I think about the, you know, once or twice a week, we were, we were just, you know, we're young guys, uh, obviously on a budget. And every time I think about that, I think about us uh, having dinner at Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Again, food. But, oh, um, perfect. Yeah. In the 90s, I don't know. I, even the music was, it was just everything was changing, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, from, I guess for me, it'd be, it, it would be, uh, God, that's a, what, what, what would you think? Oh, well, definitely like clothing items, I think about where it went from like baggy jeans to like bat, like wearing plaid everything because it got grungy and then I had my Doc Martens on and yeah <laughs> yeah, like, yeah yeah or, or silly yeah. things like uh even just beverages there was Crystal Pepsi for for a short time <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right yeah you know what Burger King and grunge there you go <laughs> there you go well, it's been fantastic talking with you today, David. I appreciate your time immensely. I know I've lost your video for the last couple of minutes, but that's okay because oh, I've been able to hear you okay. Okay, so, good, good. But uh, I, I really want to thank you for your time. And when this comes yeah. out, I'll make sure that I give you guys a, a message and I'll tag you and everything.